Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ante Room, brought to you by Heart and Hand, the modern Oddfellows Guide at oddfellowsguide.com. If you want to learn more about the Independent Order of Oddfellows, please check out iof.org. Just kidding. It's me. Tonight we have a very special episode for you. We have Billy Sanderson from Columbia Number 2 in British Columbia, and he will be giving us a special presentation of a class he did on Oddfellow Symbolism of the Initiatory and the First Degree. We will be splitting up this video into two segments, so make sure you keep an eye out for part two of two. Enjoy. Um, so, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the course. We'll do a class. We'll do some introduction and then we'll get into, uh, symbolism and all of that. So there's a, there's a history component to it all. There's a, um, uh, I guess, a, so a few tangents I might go off on history and, uh, some things about members, but, um, the essence of it is talking about symbols in our hall. Uh, so if we all remember, there's the hall um miss it uh the the purpose and the reason for the class uh came about because of a um, incident i had when i was in the hall uh during it was a there was a dinner and then a open meeting uh last spring and uh what was going on in the uh during the dinner was sort of social fundraising and so forth but there were family members in there um, I was in the hall and uh, in walked a, uh, a person, a member who was uh, a new member, initiate, and they had uh, some family members with them and they were very proud of, of uh, you know, to show off the hall. And they were walking around explaining that we do meetings in here and everything. And the family member asked, so what do all these symbols mean? Uh, all up on the ceiling and the frescoes and everything and this member could not give an explanation on the uh, on the what the symbols meant and the pictures and everything and so I thought you know I should kind of collect a couple brothers and sisters and we put together this class uh, to uh, give everybody some information maybe Maybe it's been a while since you had your third degree when, when we go through all the symbols again, or maybe you're not even there yet. You're just first or initiate and um, you, uh, you've you wondered yourself. But this class is a little different um, because it's going to involve you. Uh, there are no symbolism experts on the line as far as I can tell, and I'm certainly not an expert. Um, and we're not talking about using symbolism more in meetings. Uh, we're here to kind of discuss the symbols that we see in the hall and, and in the degree work. Uh, the meeting will be about, uh, sorry, the meetings I'll talk about are the traditional ones, uh, but I really want people to kind of chime in and um, help explore some more meetings that people might have that are personal to the uh, symbols. Uh, and even talk about some modern ones because I'm talking about ones from the 1800s. Um, you're most welcome to pop open your mute, undo your mute button and, um, and uh, ask questions or whatever. Uh, I do have this little funky microphone in slides where I'm actually going to request that you participate. And uh, for the extroverts, you jump right in. The introverts, I might, might call upon you. I hate to do that. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a shot this way. It certainly is a lot easier when I'm standing in front of 20 or 30 people like we were uh, at, the, at the first class. Um, and just a reminder to everyone that uh, symbolism is a form of art. And so there are many meanings. 
And because it's art, uh, the meaning can be in the eye of the beholder and in the mind of the beholder. So the way I'll go through the classes is broken into some parts. Um, we'll talk a bit about the symbolism, the purpose of symbolism. Uh, I do a little bit more introduction to and some history about the degrees, and then we'll dive into each of the symbols of initiation and first degree. At the end, um, I'll carry off on to some symbols that we don't have in the degrees anymore, uh, but they still are in the hall. You'll see them in the hall when you um, when I pop them up. And then there's some other fun stuff at the end that we'll, we'll do that was part of the initiation degree um, in the 1800s. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. There will be a second and a third degree uh, uh, symbolism class. Uh, we haven't figured out when that will be, but it'll likely um, be in the fall when we have more people you know, from Bastion and Columbia through the degrees. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Um, so to get us sort of kicked off, uh, symbolism is, uh, I have this definition or this uh, little uh, blurb about symbolism is the reading of or interpretation of an object, an action or a language that's much different than the form it is or the actual picture. Um, the object could be trivial, um, the actions uh, most commonplace, the language simple, but nevertheless there's an association or a connection um, to a different meaning or a notion that's something higher and of greater importance than just the simple symbol itself. So I'm going to have you, I'm going to unpop everybody, I'm going to unmute all. I, uh, everybody should be unmuted. And I'm going to quiz you on this. So what comes to mind when you see this symbol or this image? Fishing. <laughs> Anybody else? Fishing rod and tackle box. Right, that's what it is. But are there things that come to mind when you think about a fishing rod and a tackle box? Makes me want to go fishing. Okay. Jackie? I'm thinking of uh, teach a man to fish. Uh-huh. Excellent. That one's good. I like that. Um, so... Some other things uh, that are kind of come to mind is, you know, maybe the sport itself, just the leisureness of the sport. Um, you know, green field, babbling brooks, uh, wet feet, the one that got away. Um, and then I love the end of this, uh, this, this quote here is that the, uh, the lack of interest in passing time, which I think we're having a lot of trouble <laughs> with now in COVID. Um, but that uh, also comes that the luxury of the couch after the day's sport is over and the last story is told. Whoop. And um, so that's the kind of the, the, the point of symbolism is that we can look at something simple and we can attach personal or um, we can attach meanings that are personal or very specific to uh, the way they're being used and in the context that we see them. So we'll talk a lot about the context of Odd Fellows. Um, the resources that I've used for this class uh, are two books. Uh, one book, uh, Symbolism and Odd Fellowship, if you can see my, my video here. This is a book you can buy at Russell's. Uh, they will special order it in for you. It is not an expensive book. Uh, it is the, a reprint or a, basically a really nice photocopy of a 270 page book by someone named William Henry Ford. And he is not the same Ford that invented the, uh, the Model T or the Ford Motor Company. Uh, he was a mechanical engineer and he has many patents to his name. His most famous patent is likely um, his association with uh, a man named uh, Henry Perky uh, and in Niagara Falls, New York, uh, he and Perky invented the machine that uh, makes shredded wheat and makes breakfast cereals. And so he did that in, uh, eight, in the 1890s. So you can find his name, William Henry Ford and Patton on Google and you will find a number of 
uh, very interesting machines that he created uh, and, and designed and patented in um, the 1890s and through his career. Uh, the other book I used is a famous book in Odd Fellowship. It's called The Odd Fellows Manual, and it is written by uh, Reverend Aaron Grosh. I'm going to pronounce it wrong many times. It's Grosh, I guess. Uh, my copy of the book here is uh, a, an interesting copy. It's a well-referenced book um, in the Odd Fellows uh, subsequent writing, so texts uh, and books will often quote uh, Grosch and um, use uh, the Oddfellow manual as a, a reference. Uh, my copy of this is a particularly interesting copy of it. It is uh, signed on the inside by a fellow by the name of John E. Chamberlain. And Chamberlain goes on to write a, a book himself called The Oddfellow's Companion, uh, which is a downsized version of this manual book. Um, what's interesting about this signature is that it is uh, John explaining where this particular edition came from. And this printing actually came from the library of Thomas Wildey. Um, and it was uh, taken when Wildey had passed away and his library was emptied out. Um, and so this book, Rebound, is uh, an original book to Thomas Wildey. So I think that's pretty cool. It goes all the way back to when this book was written um, in the 1852 version I have. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool book. The books are available on archive.org. So you can go to archive.org and Google either and search either of these books and you can have a digital version uh, in PDF downloaded. Okay, so that's a lot about the resources and what we're going to talk about here. Um, so I'm going to open the lines up again. Uh, so what might be the reason for having so many symbols in Oddfellows? And as you see in the hall, there's, um, there's dozens of symbols around the hall. So I'll leave it open to you guys. Well, it's a bit of a secret society, right? So I'm sure that's kind of where it started way back when. Mm -hmm. I would, uh... I would think probably it's a sort of it's a way of uh, having mnemonic devices which you can uh, then use to propagate uh, uh, you know uh, values the society I suppose right thank you Stephen yep right so like visual reminders of meaning right yeah meaning behind what we're doing yeah exactly so one of the things that I found interesting um, doing some research about the roles, especially in in the book, the manual, when they're defining uh, the roles of uh, in the hall, the officers and the appointed people, uh, in the role of conductor and in warden, it uh, points out specifically that the person must be uh, literate and well-read and able to speak as an important qualification for their role. So I almost wondered if symbolism was a way to uh, help people who could not read and were not literate uh, understand the symbols and the teaching of Odd Fellowship. Could also be so that uh, the people that uh, were visual learners could also understand better too, Bill. Yes, exactly, Nick. Yes. So my second question is, you know, we have in our rituals um, stories from the Bible, and there's quite a bit about um, a uh, supreme being, religious uh, aspects to our order. So what might be reasons for that, if anyone has thoughts on that? I think for the Bible stories, uh, they were probably readily available to people in the culture. Um, most people even if they didn't read it, would have or knew someone who had a Bible. Right. Um, the, the, uh, one of them, of course, the, uh, is it the, the second degree is probably one of the more famous stories anyway. Yes, yeah, exactly. And I, I would have to agree with that comment because I think in the 1800s, uh, you know, the most common book in a house would have been the Bible. 
or a religious doctrine of some type, so uh, manual of some type. So I think it is pretty common. Also, uh, there there is an aspect of virtue that people would have been learning at church, and it's a it's a tie into that that Odd Fellowship is is full of virtues and um, and important stories. So I'm gonna move on. It's gonna keep telling me this every time. That's really weird. Um, so a little bit of history about the degrees. So in uh, when degrees changed, uh, which was about the 1880s, and in uh, and as late as the 1890s, uh, some lodges were still converting over to the three degree after initiation. Um, which is the way we have the model now, first, second, and third. Uh, previously, there were five. So they come up in some of the um, the books, especially uh, in the book on symbols from Ford. Uh, so the white, the second degree is was the pink, and it was known as the covenant. Uh, third, royal blue. Four, remembrance, was green, and scarlet was five. And so what has happened is they've just condensed those into the three so similar stories uh, remain the same. Uh, some of the teaching and so forth are um, are dropped, and uh, we'll come to those ones at the end. So each degree has lessons, and it each has their own symbols. So it was a well-studied member of all the symbols and the degree ritual um, was considered a commitment to the order, right? And so there's stories from lodges where people are getting chastised for. Um, not knowing their ritual well enough um, in modern days, but in the uh, the past, uh, a, the little red log book we have uh, quite often didn't have all the words in it. And so it was up to the member performing to have memorized all the, uh, the text for the ritual. And in the early days, uh, Columbia Lodge Number 2 and Victoria Lodge were not... Um, performing their degrees with long spaces or long periods of time in between. There was often the case that there would be up to three degrees performed in one meeting. So members who would be allowed in uh, to the meeting would progress. So depending on what degree you were at, but in our registry book, it was quite often you would see that the uh, third, fourth and fifth degree were all performed the same evening for uh, a group of members. And so to illustrate that, I'm going to show a graph because I love graphs. And this is uh, the Columbia II initiation ceremonies in the year of our establishment, 1870. And in 1870, there were 13 cer uh, times the ceremony for initiation was performed. So there was a meeting every week. Our lodge was initiated in February of 20, uh, our lodge Columbia number two was initiated in 1870 and uh, it took 13 performances by the end of the year. So the members that were initiated here would have seen it a number of times through the years, uh, through the year. And that goes to show kind of how many times somebody would have seen the, the lessons and the symbols. And to contrast that, uh, this is how long it took for 13 degrees in Columbia number two most recently. So from 20 using 2018, uh, we have to go all the way back to 2010 uh, for 13 performances. Now, the number of candidates uh, at those ceremonies were many, many more than what we have up here. But the number of times somebody would have seen it, uh, it takes uh, an understanding that uh, we may not be as tuned into symbolism, meaning as we might have been um, in our early days of Odd Fellows. If you enjoy what you're watching so far, make sure to click like and subscribe and to hit the link in the description to watch part two of this video.